If you are one of the lucky few who can earn an income from a specific activity that you love and are good enough, kudos to you. And congratulations, you might not need a fast lane. A slow lane just might suffice. No worries. But for those of us who can't transform our loves into income, there are other alternatives paved by the fast lane. Doing what you love befakes and derivatives if you can't work a job or a business doing what you love, you're likely to fall into a trap. Your natural reaction is to make a deal with the devil, the slow lane. You. Trade your life away, doing things you hate, in exchange for doing things you love. You say, I'll do five days of work I hate so I can enjoy two weekend days doing something I love. Does this barter sound like rational thinking? For example, my friend Andy is a bank collections agent and hates his job. At beer time, I hear the complaints, the frustration, and the BS about the job, the Nazi-like micromanagement, the incompetent boss, and his psychotic co-workers. He's on the firing line from all fronts. He numbs himself to this suffering five days a week. His salvation? His weekend. He pays do what you hate with a weekend of boating, which is his do what you love. Then other people negotiate with do what you love into an alternative or a derivative. For example, Pauline loves to knit, so she sells her knitting online. Jose loves automotive audio, so he opens a car stereo shop. Janice loves to sculpt and sells her works at the local gallery. Gary is an avid bodybuilder, so he becomes a personal trainer. There are two dangers to derivatives. One, they don't make money fast. Two, they endanger the love. First, do what you love or rarely creates money fast because more than likely, not only are you doing what you love but thousands of others love doing the same thing too, just tune into the first week auditions for American Idol for proof. The need is weak. This saturates markets and makes profit margins shallow. At my gym, a personal trainer acquaintance told me he is struggling to make ends meet. When I asked why, he responded that personal training is so competitive that he can't charge a price worth his time. His service fees are deflationary. Caused by an abundant supply of trainers, and when supply exceeds demand, need, prices move down. Not enough need too much supply. So why is the field for personal trainers so saturated? Simple. People follow the espoused guru-esque advice without reflection on need. Do what you love. Unfortunately, if you love doing it, bet on thousands of others loving it too. When you do what you love, prepare to face stiff competition. Who enjoys higher margins? The personal trainer? Or the guy who starts a company to clean up crime scenes? The second danger of derivatives is that your love becomes vulnerable to contamination when you do it for money. If you are forced to do anything, if something you purport to love, in exchange for a paycheck, that love is put in danger. Years ago, I took a job as a limo driver because I loved to drive. By the time that job ended, I hated to drive. After work, I'd stay home because I was so sick of driving. My love was contaminated. I once had a friend who created fantastic paintings as a hobby. When I asked her why she doesn't paint full-time for a living, her answer was simple, I paint when I am impassioned to paint. The few times when she painted for money, it stunted her artistic creativity because a different force fueled the motivation, money, not emotion from the moment. Do what you love is left to professional athletes because they are at the pinnacle of their games. And yet, even after making millions, many of these athletes suffer the same fate. They lose their love of the game. Dancers lose their love for dance. Artists lose their love for art. Money and the demands of life cast a cloud over the love and darken it into a burden. While derivatives of do what you love or might yield a figment of happiness, they operate in saturated marketplaces and, more importantly, they could jeopardize your natural love for the activity. Your ignition, moving from love to passion the motivational fuel for the fast lane is passion, not love. Passion gets you out of the garage and onto the road. If you have a passion for a specific goal, you'll do anything for it. I had a passion for Lamborghinis and was willing to do anything for it. Pick up dog shit, mop floors, work at 3 a.m., whatever it was going to take, I had the passion to do it. Did I love driving limos? Hell no. But I had a fast lane passion and it motivated my movement to the vision of future. Your vehicle needs an ignition, a starter, something that compels you to jump out of bed in the morning challenge to tackle the day. That ignition is passion. You need a passion for something greater. 
It is different for everybody, but when you find it, you will do anything for it. When you reposition your goals and visions at the end of a road that works, that end transforms your daily life into passionate action toward that specified destination. If you can't get paid doing some activity, identify a specific why or end goal that ignites your passion to act. What is your why? Why are you doing this? Why go fast lane? Whom do you want to prove wrong? My WHYS read like this. I want to pay off my mother's mortgage. I want to wake up without an alarm clock. I want to write a book without the pressure of money. I want a big house on a mountainside with a pool. I want a Lamborghini. I want to make a difference. I want to prove him wrong. Passion beats do what you love because passion fuels motivation for something greater than yourself and is generalized. When the focus is doing what you love, the focus becomes industry-specific and you're likely to violate the commandment of need. Why are you starting this business? Because you love it? Or because there is a real market need? I repeat, passion for an end goal, a why, drives Fastlane action. Mike Rowe, host of the cable television show Dirty Jobs, profiled several owners of businesses who had less than lovable duties. From testing bovine manure to cleaning up pigeon goop, the owners were passionate. None of them loved what they did, but they had passionate, wise and very deep bank accounts. Competition Was sparse because everyone else was busy chasing, do what you love. A formidable, why is all you need to turn your daily activities into passionate motivation, the to get up in the morning a metamorphosis to bust open a fast lane road. What are your WHYS and are they strong enough to motivate you into process? Passion erases the suffering of work when I was in startup mode with my company, I worked long hours. Was I suffering the toil of work? No. I enjoyed it because I had my AYS and I was moving. Toward them. The journey hardened me, challenged me, and yes, it was even fun. I was passionate about what I wanted and I was going to get it. The fast lane isn't a destination but a personal journey. Writing this book has been an enduring journey, and I admit that I gave up three times. Why? After a year of writing and not finishing, my love for writing evaporated. My love became a hate. I was doing what I love and suddenly that love faded because people started to expect a book. I confided to a friend I quit. I no longer enjoy it and I don't need to finish it. So how did I finish if my love for writing evaporated? I found my passion, which compelled me to finish, I love to see the dreams of others become reality. When a dead dream is given sudden life, I feel invigorated. Anytime I wanted to give up, I'd receive an email that applauded me, your forum changed my life, org thank you, my life has turned for the better. That is passionate currency that repositioned my writing effort into action. I went from love to suffering to passion. Get your road to converge with a fantastic dream A road that doesn't converge with your dreams is a dead end. When you can see dreams, life withers. Reflect back to childhood when you heard, what do you want to be when you grow up? Underneath this question, what's it really asking? It's a probe to find the road to your dreams, and it was usually answered in a phantasmal vision. For me, I wanted to be an astronaut, blame Han Solo, a filmmaker, blame George Lucas, and an author, blame Isaac Asimov. How about you? What is your outrageous, fantastic dream? And the real question of concern, is there any chance you are doing it, or will be doing it? More than likely, you're not, because the slow lane has killed it. I asked my friend Rick this question. Guess what? He didn't answer this question with, I want to be a sales representative at Verizon Wireless. Nope. He answered. With, I wanted to be a race car driver. So, why is Rick selling cell phones today? Is there any chance in hell he will actually become his dream, a race car driver? There isn't. The dream is dead and the road is derelict. Nonetheless, as Rick sticks to his job and waits for a promotion, he wonders, there's got to be more than this. And then there's Sarah. She didn't answer this question with, I want to be a shift manager at Taco Bell. Nope, she wanted to be an artist. But today, Sarah finds herself working the graveyard shift, mopping up the floors in the dining room from slobs who have mistaken sour cream for finger paint. As she slams the mop head in the ringer, Sarah has a moment of disquiet. Is this what my life has become? The problem with these people is not their jobs. 
We've all had crappy, embarrassing jobs that we hate. The problem is their dead-end road that will never converge with a dream. Dreams are forsaken to pay the bills. Instead of a convergent road to dreams or a chance of a dream, their road goes through an inescapable hell. Life becomes suffering. There is nothing wrong with working at Verizon or Taco Bell. Heck, these jobs would have been promotions in comparison to the meaningless jobs I've held. But please, don't make these jobs your means to the end, your final road, because the end most likely will never come. You see, if your dream is dead, so is your passion. No passion numbs you to the greatest violinist in the world while he plays in the train depot. No passion leads to mediocrity and the land of everybody. No passion leads to unhappiness. No passion gequels no vealt. If you're struggling for motivation, re-energize your dream and align it with a road capable of burning a trail to its reality. Dead dreams can't burn trails of passion. Passion fires your will to do what is necessary beyond what others can't. Fastlaners work unlike everyone else so they can live unlike anyone else. Take four years of hard work in exchange for 40 years of freedom. Unfortunately, most people take 40 years of hard work for four weeks of freedom or however long their paid vacation time lasts. Find your snow in the toilet, how do you find your passion? Passion comes from either excitement or discontent. Take this story posted on the Fastlane Forum, thefastlaneforum.com. I grew up in a poor family and lived in a very old rundown barn that had half of it converted into a home. One of the worst times of the year was the winter, because our water pipes would freeze and, with it, our running water. The only way to flush the toilet was to bring snow into the barn, pack it into the water tank behind the toilet, and wait for it to melt. I saw that my mom had to put snow in the tank of the toilet bowl just for us to flush. The worst part was that it had to be refilled every time someone used the toilet. I thought to myself, I never want to live like this again. What is your passion, your perennial to snow in the toilet? Leslie Walburn is passionate about animals. Disillusioned by county-owned shelters that euthanize dogs, her dream is to own a no-kill dog rescue shelter. While she can do what she loves and get a job at a shelter, it doesn't bring her closer to her dreams, nor will the job help her amass the wealth needed to pursue the dream. Yes, dog shelters are expensive. Instead, Leslie allows her passion to fuel her motivation, she starts a fast lane business, unrelated to animals, that eventually funds her dream. Her passion leads to a dream without the crucible of money.